Well, good to see it each and every everyone. Just good, 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 good. We're going to look at Jeremiah a little bit today. Fascinating prophet. Uh, he's right after Isaiah. So uh, in the Bible, the book of Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah was an interesting person. Um, called called to the Lord. Um, before I get into my text, the first chapter describes how that Jeremiah was called while he was yet in the, his mother's womb. Um, what does that tell us? What does that say to you and I about God's plan for your life? Hallelujah. That we have a purpose to belong to him. And until we just figure that out, until we discover that his plans are best, we'll never be happy. We'll never be happy and completely satisfied until we are striving to be in his plan, his per- perfect plan. Doesn't mean that's going to be easy. Doesn't mean that you're not going to have trials, ups and downs, setbacks, things that you cannot describe that you maybe don't even have an answer for. But we want to talk today about the word of Jeremiah. That when he went to a people that he proclaimed the things of God, they were resistant. They did not like the message. They did not want to change. They liked the way they were living. They were set in their ways. They were stubborn. They were rebellious. They were away from God. Were they happy? No. They were much uh, people that were uh, just kind of live and let live. Whatever came to them, that's what they did. And so when God called Jeremiah, it did not mean that he would have a nice little church somewhere, that he would have a nice little congregation and there would be no problems, right? Jeremiah was called to the, to the battle. Jeremiah was called to the front lines. He was called when no one else wanted to go. I'm sure there was days when he wondered, why me, Lord? Why me? Why am I the one that you've called? And sometimes we question the Lord, sometimes in our own humanity, we say, wow, what's going on here, Lord? It just doesn't make sense. And the life often has a way of taking us to places where it does not make sense in our thinking, right? In our understanding. And so the text is Jeremiah 17, chapter, beginning at verse 5. We're going to call this when the heat comes. When the heat comes here, it's referring to trouble. Trouble, drought. It's talking about a time, a season, where there, did, where, where, where there will not be rain. And therefore, our crops are going to struggle. And therefore, our welfare is going to struggle. So we read here, verse 5, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in mankind. Well, he just lays it out there. He doesn't beat around the bush. He doesn't sugarcoat anything. He says, listen, thus saith the Lord. This is the word from the Lord. Cursed is the man who trusts in mankind. Wow. And makes flesh his strength. What is that saying? Man who begins to think highly of himself is in a bad position with God. Because they're excluding the Lord. They're saying, look at me, look what I could do. Look what my hands have done. Look what my strength can do. It makes flesh a strength in whose heart, here's the problem, his heart turns away. The heart, we can be strong and have a heart for God. That's a good thing. We can be strong in our youth, we can be strong in in our life, but what really makes it really strong is our heart for the Lord. And here it's saying our heart turned, here's the people of God, their hearts were away from the Lord. Their hearts have turned to other gods in this time period. For now he goes on, for he will be like a bush in the desert and will not see when prosperity comes. He's talking about a person now who has turned his heart to, away from God, but will live in stony waste in the wilderness, a land of salt without inhabitant. That's that's a gloom picture right there. Yeah, that's a a desert, that's a deserted place, that's a, that's a lonely place, that's a for salt, 
I'm running back into um, uh, what's the place out in the Dakotas where the old faithful is and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting all kinds of answers. Yellowstone, Yellowstone. Karen and I went there on our honeymoon. First time I really took a trip. First time I really had a vacation. It was a honeymoon. And so Emily is making up for all my uh, stay home body person. She's a traveler. Anna's right behind her footsteps. And we'll be proud of them. But you know what? There's a place there. There's places where there's uh, warm springs and different things. But there's places where there's just kind of a salty thing. It's just yucky. It's just blah. Nothing can really grow there. It's just, and it's, it's just, it's just not a good, good way to, you know, this is not a good picture. But it's going to change. It's going to change here in the next few verses. Now we have the bad stuff. Cursed is the man who trusts in himself. He excludes God. He said, ah, I don't need God. I'm just going to do it myself. You know, God, what's God ever done for me? And we get in this attitude. Well, you know. Well, he says, but blessed is the man, verse 7, who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. I want you to catch that. When I first read that, I thought, wow, wait a minute. This is really good. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. In other words, your very fact that you can trust in the Lord is from the Lord. The very fact that you want the Lord is from God. The very fact that you are making God your trust is, is shifting the weight off your own self onto Him. This is God's problem. These are God's people. These are, these, these are your family members. These are your people who you love. And God is saying, if you will turn to me, I will bless you. If you will seek me, you will find me. If you will trust in me, I will not let you down. And you're going to become like a tree. You're going to be like a tree. I don't know if you want to be a tree. This is the imagery. All right, now, a tree. How many want to be an oak tree? Yeah? In your faith, in your spirituality, you want to be like a tree. What, 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 the, what does a tree need in order to survive? It needs roots. It needs soil, but it needs roots. In that soil, in that system, that root system, it says it extends its roots by a stream. How many have, saw, have seen uh, root system that go down to, to you know, uh, kind of maybe up high and they go down? It's just amazing. Have you ever tried to root out a stump by hand? And if it was anything like that size, you had your work cut out for you, right? There's a massive system. And some trees have longer roots than others. Some trees grow deeper. Some trees roots spread out. What's all that have to do with anything? Well, in order to survive dry times. It says, now here's the verse. It doesn't say if the heat comes. It doesn't say that at all. It says when the heat comes. It will not fear. It doesn't say you might have trial. It says you will have trial. Right? It, it, it isn't that we go around expecting, oh, I wonder what's going to go wrong today, and on and on we go, we get all... We beat ourselves up, but it's just about, well, we're not surprised the enemy showed up. We're not surprised that if we step out for the Lord, that he, the enemy doesn't like it, he wants to react. But our root system, if it's embedded in the Lord Jesus Christ, we can withstand the fiery darts of the enemy. That means you need a shield. You extinguish your faith is a shield. The faith is faith. What is, it? What, what is the faith? The faith in the Lord. The faith that he will protect. The faith that God says and means what he says is going to do what he says. And if we will obey him, if we will put our trust, we may not understand even a fraction of what the Bible says, but if we will trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where we start and we begin 
our life with him. Our root system is so valuable. Isn't it interesting? Some of you guys know about grass and farming a little bit, gardening. And some plants, it almost does them good when they have a little dry time because their roots go down deeper. It's sort of an interesting contrast because the Lord knows what you and I need in order for our root system to grow deeper. That we will not topple, fall over, or wither and dry up by the things of this world that are hard. That we will not dry up and go under our fruit and our leaves will not wither because our root system isn't in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the source in which you stand on. You're not trusting in your own understanding, as Proverbs talks about. You're not trusting in your own own mindset and your own intellect, but you're trusting in the one who knows all things. It takes the load off. Why should I worry about so many things? Why should I begin to fret over so many things that are happening in the world? Why should I try to even surmise or to try to come up with the answers when the answer is in the Lord. People today are struggling with what is going to happen in the future because they do not have a foundation or a root system in the Lord. And it is our calling to walk in this life and demonstrate. And what's the phrase? Grow where you're planted. Grow where you're planted. Where God places you in the community, in the workplace, in your uh, neighborhood, you are there for a reason to shine the light of Jesus. And will not fear when the heat comes. Isn't it interesting how our world right now is under this fear factor, this fear. So many people are living with fear. Why is that? Fear comes from the enemy. Satan operates with fear tactics. He wants us to get us to doubt, to fear, to shrink back. He wants us to look like grasshopper and act like grasshopper and feel like grasshopper. When in fact, he have been called to be like a David who took a sling of rock and slew the giant because he says, I come in the name of the Lord. We are, not, we are not called to cower away or hide away during the times of the world and the season that we're living. We are time, we're called to be like a Jeremiah, to proclaim the things of God. And we all of a sudden, we just, sometimes, we, as Paul said, just station yourself. Stand there. Stand there. And rebuke the enemy, rebuke the lies, and declare the things of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So when you talk, you talk to your friends, your neighbors, and you testify about the things of God that have happened and the faith that you have because of what he has done, not because of what you have done. We are trusting God. Is there anyone else to really trust? There isn't. If we trust in man, it says we're cursed. We can't trust in man. Man is not going to save us. Man is not going to be there. Jesus is going to be there when the end comes. Hallelujah. I want to be here. I want to be trusting him now. And I want to be excited when he calls. I want to be excited. I don't want to be so attached to the world. I don't want to, oh, I don't want to leave you. I'm ready with Lord. If you're coming today, I'm ready. Let's, let's, let's be out of here. Whatever may happen. It's in your hand because I'm trusting in you. I cannot uh, be afraid even for my kids, though sometimes they worry me. Sometimes I hear, oh, my God, thank you, Jesus. A semi almost, well, a semi got into Anna's lane the other day. You know, I mean, just stuff like this, you know, you you go, oh, Lord, help us. You know, we worry a little bit because we're human. But overall, our trust has to be in the Lord our God because he has all things in control. When Paul and Silas were in the prison, one of them, I don't know which one it was, 
doesn't say, but they said they began to sing hymns. They began to sing hymns. Hymns. Spiritual songs. Praise is one of the weapons that God has given the church and given you as a weapon to silence the enemy. To silence the negativity, to silence the things that the enemies, the heat or the drought or the thinking of, well, what's going to happen if it doesn't? What's going to happen if we don't? We begin to fill in the blank. We begin to try to think it on our own understanding. We begin to dry up. We begin to wither. We begin to shrink. We begin to act like grasshoppers. We begin to think like grasshoppers. We begin to look like grasshoppers. We can't go in. They're too big. It's too hard. When the Lord says, you've got this. I've got this. You just need to step out. A trust, a root system like a tree. Everyone uses this. Some of you guys will remember this song. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. How many know that song? Well, quite a few. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. The old timers, a lot of them figured it out. They took the word of God literally. This is what I believe we ought to do today. Take the word of God as it, what it says. We are to be likened to like a tree. Jeremiah is proclaiming the things so long ago. They are still pertinent. They are still applicable today. Wow, that's hard to get that word out. Applicable. Ap I can't even say it again. It applies to us today. But so many people are wishy wainy go with this flow, go with this, oh, this sounds good, I'll go over there. Well, what God is saying, you'd be growing me. You put your roots into the system of my word. You put the roots into the person of Jesus Christ who never changes. We may go through some dry times. We may go through some hard times. We went through COVID. It's a hard stretch, no doubt. What does help us? Maybe we need to go through some. I'm sick. I'm speaking to America. Maybe we need to go through some harder times to get the people of God where God wants us to be. He does not want to leave us as we are. He was. God is preparing his church to get caught up. Jesus is expecting the bride. The Lord is working in the church to get the church ready to fly from this place to be transformed and we have a new place, a new body with the Lord. And this old world is losing its hold on me. This old world, the older I get, it begins to, well, you know, life is short. The Lord has been good to me. The Lord has helped us thus far. I'm going to live out my days the best I can with his help. I'm going to keep learning, right? I'm going to keep learning. I'm going to keep seeking. In order to have a fresh uh, a root system of supply, we have to keep digging in the Word. Digging nuggets of truth. Out of the word of God. The psalmist said, blessed is the man who does not walk in the calm. This is over in Psalm 1. He compared, this is very similar to Jeremiah 17. He talks about this person that is, he doesn't walk in the counsel of the way. He doesn't listen to the lies of the world at the end. He doesn't stand in the path of sinners. In other words, he doesn't allow himself to be drugged into the, well, if anything goes, whatever this culture is, must be right. Everybody's accepting it. No, 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 no. God's person or God's people are called to stand and take a stand, not sit in the, not, not go along with the scoffers. Rather, be, he is delighting himself in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates. He is frequently 
in the word of God, and he will be like a tree. There it is again. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. Whatever he does, he prospers. What do we really need in this life? I need a heart for God. I need a tender heart. I need a bit I need to be more sensitive to his voice. I need to be able to be more tender toward people. The root system in Jesus. I need help from the Lord in order to produce fruit. And then we get to this part where he says the heart, verse 9. He gives right, he goes right into the heart. He gets right into, your, into the heart. The heart, what does he say about the heart? The heart is more deceitful than all else. I, I, I just have to be careful. Sometimes, and I've, I've said this myself, well, just follow your heart. Okay, but if my heart can be deceived, then I need to put that in proper aligning. If my heart is toward the Lord, then I'm trusting that God is putting into my heart what I want and I should do. But if I'm merely just following my heart, that could take me in a wrong place. Are you catching? Are you picking this? The heart is, is, is the problem. The heart often, as Jesus said, out of, out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What's in your heart? And the heart is, it has a problem. The heart needs Dr. Jesus. And, and the Dr. Jesus comes to change our heart. And thanks be to God, he does a very good job at changing people. I can't change people. I should not try to change people. I should pray for them. Believe God. Encourage, encourage, and build up. That's our calling. Sometimes we have to say things out of love, I know. I, we have to, especially for leadership, pastors have to sometimes say hard things to bring us into correction. We're not called to be tickling ears. We're called to proclaim the word of God and explain as much as we can by the help of the Holy Spirit. And to live it out. If we're in trouble without God, see. But thy Lord search the heart. This is a good thing. He searches my heart. And when I'm open to him, he tests my mind. He knows the thoughts from afar off. He knows what's in your heart. And sometimes you have been misunderstood because people have read you wrong. And But God knows your heart. Amen. You can rest in that. But you've been misunderstood. But God knows your heart. Some things are not always what they look like. Thanks be to Jesus, he knows our hearts. What's in your heart today? What's in my heart today? Does Jesus see a heart hungry for the things of God? Does Jesus, does God see a heart? There's a heart that I can dwell in. You know, in the book of Chronicles, his eyes move to and fro, it says, looking for a heart he can fill. Have you read that lately? His eyes, the eyes of the Lord, are looking for people just like you and I, who he wants to, he said, I can dwell there. I can, I can come into that heart. I can live there. I can live through them. I can strengthen them. I can uh, help them grow even more. I can overcome. I believe also that when the Lord is in our heart, he helps our physical heart and our physical body. But we did not read, but we referred to Proverbs chapter 3 a bit ago. If we go back and read on a little bit further and read Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, I'm not going to read it all, but I want to start at least a little further down. When we talk about, when we acknowledge him in all our, all our ways, he makes our path straight. We do not be wise in our own eyes. We fear the Lord, turn away from evil. It, it, here's the word of God. It will be healing to your body. 
There's a verse for you and I to say, you know what? There's aches here, and you know, let's get into the Word and let the Word of God heal. I believe God's Word heals. He speaks His Word. We need to proclaim the Word of God over our bodies. The Word of God is the healer. So, let me give you an example. Lord, there's something funny here, but in Jesus' name, I believe I am made whole. I declare your presence. I declare your healing. I believe you paid for my healing. By the stripes, we proclaim the word of God. We, we acknowledge him. We acknowledge his word. And it will be healing to your body. How many need some strengthening? How many need some time? To, you know, you need a little boost. You need some, you need the help of a word. Now he goes on, and it's interesting how Jeremiah, he, he kind of gives us an illustration, uh, verse 11, back to the text, a, a partridge. A part, your version may say something different, but it's a bird, it's a, you know, a game here. A partridge that hatches eggs which it has not laid, so is he who makes it fortune, but unjustly. Isn't that an interesting, it's like a proverb. It's like a, almost like a riddle. A partridge that hatches eggs which it's, it has not laid. Uh, it's, it's he's, taking, he's taking someone else's eggs and, and, and hatching them. Let's read it on. Read on. So is he who makes a fortune, but unjustly. In the midst of his days, it will forsake him. And in the end, he will be a fool. That's a, that's a tremendous verse because, in other words, all the money that you can make, if you can make a lot of money, would it buy you happiness? And, will, and for sure, it will not buy you God. It will not buy you eternity with him. And so we have to get things squared up. And you know what the Lord said? I will provide my needs. If I have extra, then... I have the little for ways to help someone else. It's a good thing to be blessed by the Lord. It's a blessing to have more than enough. And so often we can get caught up with wanting even more. When he says, you have enough already, but let's manage. Let's be stewards. Let's be fruit bearers. Let's turn it over. Let's give it away. Let's help someone else. You see, when you're focusing toward the Lord, this is envision a tree. Your branches are upward. Come on. Your branches are upward. That means you're saying, Lord, I'm receiving, I'm needing you, I'm wanting you. And let the sun, Jesus Christ, shine through my weaknesses, through my frailties, even in my unbelief, in my doubts. I confess to you that I'm, the, I'm just an ordinary person. But I understand enough that I need you as I'm looking at you right now. The Father in heaven, you see where we're at? You know us by name. You know about every detail. You know about every fear. You know about all our frailties. You know about all our weaknesses. We lay them at your feet. Now, Jesus, I pray that you will pour into us, Lord, a ray of hope. Pour into us a ray of peace where there's been confusion. Pour into us a ray of wisdom where there's been Unwisdom or confusion, Lord. We lift our hearts to you. I pray, Lord, our hearts will be in the right place. I pray that our hearts will be tender. I pray that our hearts will be quick to forgive. That our hearts will be easy to, to, to understand and want the things of God more than anything else. So we come to you, Jesus, right now. Here we are. We open our hearts to you and receive from you.